Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to create these cyberpunk implants using Substance Painter. We recently released these cyberpunk characters. Both the male and the female characters all come with six different skin variations. So that's three different skin tones with two different styles of implants each. But if you want to create something more unique for yourself or you want to design your own implants, I'm going to show you how I did it so you can follow along. Now if you do want to follow along, I'm uploading my project files to Production Crate for free for anyone with an account. Just be aware that they are fairly large files, so only download the one that you're going to work on. And also, before we start, just be aware that while I am going to show you guys step by step how I created this, we did cover a lot of these concepts in previous videos, so if this is your first substance video that you're watching, you might want to go back and watch those previous videos just to brush up on the basics if this is your first time at Substance Painter. But if you know a little bit about Substance Painter, this video should be all you need. So let me give you a quick tour of the files that you just downloaded. Both the male and the female character are set up exactly the same, so you could follow along with each one. I'm going to work on the male character today. When you open up the Substance Painter file, you'll notice a few things. You'll notice the skin, hair, and eyes already have materials. And I've even gone ahead and just baked the details of the clothing for you already. So if I press B for bake, and cycle through the baked mesh maps, you'll notice that they already exist. I've already done it for you. You'll also notice that the clothes have no material yet. But that's okay, we're going to do that in a future video. Today we're going to focus on the skin. So over here in my texture set list, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the jacket and the shirt. Let's take a quick tour of the skin material that's already set up for you. So his skin is actually broken up into three different materials. We have the head, the body material, and the limbs material. This character has three different skin tones and they're already built in. So if you click on one of them like the head material, and you look over in the layers, you can see there's a layer for the normals, the roughness, and three different skin tones. By default, the brown skin is showing, but you can turn that off. And now we have the black skin. You turn that one off, and now we've got the white skin. And obviously, you probably want to do that for each one, so it matches. We're going to set this project up in such a way that it doesn't matter which skin tone is on the bottom. The implants are going to be on separate layers, so when you're done, you can actually export a texture map for each of the three skin tones with the implants that we're going to design. So the two different aspects of the cyber implants that I want to create are these gold filaments on the face. And then I want to create a black rubbery interface between his mechanical arm and his body. Just like we see here. And you notice that these aren't just blocks of color. They have lots of seemingly hard surface height detail. So I'll show you how to create that as well. Let's start with the gold filament. I'm going to go back to the head material and I'll create a new layer at the top. And let's name this gold filament. And I'm going to crank up the metallic slider all the way, and I'll pick a nice gold color. It doesn't have to be too saturated, something like this. And let's also turn up the height just a little bit so it sticks out once we start painting it on the skin. Now to the gold filament layer, I'm going to click here and go add a black mask. And with a nice, sharp, small brush, I'm just going to draw a really quick test line to see what it looks like. I can see it's a nice metallic stripe, very sharp edge, and it does seem to be sticking out from his skin a little bit. Now one problem is I want this to be smooth. I don't want it to have the bump detail from the skin. So here in the channels, I'm going to switch to the height. And you can see the blending mode right now is set to linear dodge. Let's switch that to normal. And let's go to the normal channel right here. And let's change the blending mode to normal. So now it's covering up instead of blending with the height information from the skin. So we get a nice smooth gold filament. Another thing I want to do is I want the skin around it to look bunched up and maybe even red and irritated. So to achieve that, we're gonna use anchor points, which we covered extensively in this previous video. Again, I'm gonna cover every step, so this video is all you need, but if you want to understand anchor points a little bit deeper, go back and watch that video after this video is done. So back on the gold filament layer, I'm gonna click on the mask and go to the add effect menu and choose add anchor point. Now above this layer, I'm gonna add a new fill layer and I'll name this gold filament edge and let's add a black mask to it. And now let's create a mask that will dynamically update no matter what I paint here for the gold filament. And what it'll do is create a border around it and then we can change what the material looks like to whatever we want. But let's set the mask up first. So inside the mask for the gold filament edge, I'm going to add a fill. And then for the fill, I'm gonna click here. And instead of a texture, I'm gonna add this anchor point from the list. So now if I alt click on the mask, you can see that it's actually mimicking the same mask as gold filament. Let me all click on gold filament mask and it looks exactly the same. And whatever I paint here on the gold filament mask will appear on the gold filament edge mask as well. 
So back in the gold filament edge mask, above this fill bucket, I'm gonna add a filter, and the filter is gonna be high pass. And then above that, I'm gonna add a levels adjustment, and I'll press invert, and let's grab this slider and drag it all the way down to the middle so that most of the face is black and there's just this big fuzzy white smudge around the outside of the paint stroke. So if we press M to go back to material, you can see I've got the gold filament layer, and wherever I paint on this gold filament mask, a white fuzzy shape will appear around the border of it. So now that we have that working, we can change the material to be sort of a swollen red, irritated skin look. So let's click on the gold filament edge layer, and we don't need to adjust the metallic, or the roughness, or the normal, just the color and the height. So let's increase the height just a little bit, and let's also change the color to a irritated red. And it will help a lot if we change the blending mode of this color so it blends more with the skin. So let's go back to the color channel here under base color. And under the blending mode, you can choose something like maybe overlay or maybe soft light. Let's make another adjustment to the color. Okay, and there we go. I think the edge of the mask might be too sharp. We need a little bit of blur. So back on the gold filament edge mask, I'm gonna add a new filter and I'm gonna choose blur, but I wanna turn that down so it's not as much. Okay, and this is actually looking a little bit weird. So I think what's going wrong is I, I probably want the skin to push in instead of out. So let's click back on our actual skin material here, and I'm gonna change the height to a negative number. That's closer to what I'm looking for. Let's tighten up this edge a little bit. You can see it's kind of a big, broad valley. So to do that, I'm gonna click back on the mask, go to that high pass filter, and just turn down the radius to tighten that up. So now we have the basics of what we need to create our gold filament implants. So I'm gonna go back to the gold filament mask, and I'll switch to a black brush, and just erase what we have, and let's draw it for real. So I want a nice small brush like this, and I can see that his hair has this big part shaved into the side of his head, so I think what I'm gonna do is draw a filament that goes down that, that goes down the length of that part. Another cool tip if you want symmetrical implants on his face is click right here for the symmetry. Now this character is not exactly symmetrical because he's got a realistic face and humans are not perfectly symmetrical, so we might need to adjust the line. If you need to adjust the symmetry, you can click here and slide it over on the x-axis. It's a very small amount, so you might have to type in a number like 0 0.02. Ooh, even smaller than that. Let's try 0 0.01. It was such a small adjustment that I actually only had to type in 0 .003 to get it right in the center. So now I can do symmetrical implants if I want to. Feel free to go crazy and design whatever designs you want. All right, and we can add other shapes in here too. Like for example, something like this, maybe something for the top of his nose. Get as creative as you want with it. It's looking pretty good, but it's also looking kind of flat. So let's add a little bit of height detail to this. So I'm gonna add a new paint layer and I'll call this filament details. Now for this layer, I only want to paint normal. So I'm going to turn on the normal channel and turn everything else off. And in the textures over here, I'm going to search for normal and they have a ton of really cool normal details just built into the program. So let's add a little bit of detail to these triangles right here. I'm going to choose whatever detail looks good to me. This one's pretty cool. Let's drag and drop it right here into our brush and I'll just click and you can see we get some instant detail in that gold filament. Now we have a problem. The detail is going outside of the boundary of the filaments into the skin, which you might think looks cool. You can leave it if you want. But if you do want to confine it to the filament, you want to right click on your layer and add a black mask and then add a fill just like before. And then inside the fill, I'm going to add that anchor point. So now the details can only appear wherever I've painted gold filament because we're referencing that same anchor point again. Now, if you want to get rid of these details and redo them, you can click on the eraser and turn on the normal channel and just erase the detail. So once again, it's up to you to get creative and crazy with it and design your own really cool cyberpunk implants. All right, next we're gonna add the black rubbery interface between this cyborg arm and the body. But first, let's create the cyborg arm texture. For this shoulder piece, I'm gonna use one of the built-in materials from Adobe. And then for the lower part, for the bicep, I'm gonna use a render create material. So for the shoulder piece, any sort of black rubberized material that kind of looks soft and bendy will work, because I imagine this part's flexible to allow for full range of motion. So any of their built-in black rubber would look pretty cool. This one's got some damage on the edges. This one's more subtle. We got a glossy one, which really fits with a cyberpunk aesthetic. That's pretty cool. And somewhere in the Adobe library, they even have this cool superhero material. 
I can't remember if this one comes with the program or if it's just up on their library, but I think it looks pretty cool, so I'll keep it. Maybe I'll switch it to red, so it kind of resembles muscle. But again, any durable but flexible looking material I think would work for this shoulder area. Let's add a black mask to that. And to make sure that material is confined just to the shoulder cap, I'm going to click on this tool, which is called the Polygon Fill tool. We talked about it in the previous video where we textured the robot. But you can use this tool to fill entire shapes with a material. So I'm going to click on Mesh Fill mode right here. And then I'm just going to click on the shoulder cap. Very cool. So for the bicep area, I'm going to use a Render Create material. So we actually have a couple mechanical looking materials that I think would look pretty good. Lots of different styles to choose from. So I think I'm going to download the 4K version of this material. Now, if you're a free user, we do have the 1K version available. And I think I want to take a chance on one of these more detailed materials too. Let's try this one, metal panel modules. Once you've downloaded those textures, here's how you import them into the program. We're going to go file, import resources, and I'll click add resources, and I'll navigate to where I downloaded them. You can see we've included a lot of different texture variations. We have the metal roughness workflow and the specular gloss workflow. So you actually don't need all of these for the project we're currently working on. We definitely need this normal map. We need the base color. We can try out the height that might look cool we need the metallic and the roughness so base color height metallic normal roughness that's all you need let's switch all these to texture and i'm going to tag these as p crate so that i can find them later if i lose them and i'll press import okay i'm going to make sure i'm on the robo arm material and i'll add a new fill layer we'll call this bicep and let's see how this looks let's start dragging these textures into their proper channels so here's the base color here's the height Here's the metallic, normal, and roughness. Okay, let's confine this to just the bicep area. So I'm gonna right click on my layer and add a black mask. And then again, using the polygon fill tool, I'll just click on this upper arm and it should fill just that area. Now in the 2D texture window over here on the right, I can try to find an interesting angle for this. I really wanna find a good placement that seems to make sense. Okay, parts of this look pretty good, but other parts don't. So let's apply the other material too, and then we can combine them together. So I'll hide this layer, bicep, and I'll import those other textures. I'll make a new fill layer called bicep2. And of course, I'll mask it to just the bicep area. And then I'll start applying my textures. Nice, this one's pretty cool. Kind of reminds me of the Winter Soldier. So I'm going to try to place these textural details in interesting ways. Like maybe I'll flip this around and try to line up these intricate details in this little crevice here in the inner elbow. I actually kind of like this better than the original bicep, so I think I'll just keep this one. But let's make it black and rubbery instead of metallic, just so it matches with the material that we're going to apply to his torso in just a minute here. I'm going to add a, a levels adjustment, and I'll make it darker by turning this down. I think that looks pretty cool. Okay, let's really quickly throw some materials on this robot hand. I'm not going to spend too much more time on this arm because I really want to focus on the skin, but we need something here to make it look right. Obviously, feel free to add much more detail and attention to this arm on your own projects. So I'll just search for metal, and there's a pretty cool one called Steel Stained, which I've applied to the lower arm here. And let's add a black mask, and I'm going to constrain it to just the little details and the joints and all that good stuff. Okay, and now I'll search for a plastic. Doesn't really matter which one you use, I'm just going to use this one. Maybe I'll change the base color though, of course. And I'll apply my black mask. And again, just constrain it to the big parts, the parts that I want to be plastic. Again, it might seem like I'm rushing, but I'm purposely not doing a whole lot of fancy work. I'm just applying materials. So if you feel like you're getting lost, again, I'm not doing anything here other than just apply materials to different parts of the model, because this isn't really the focus of the tutorial. So now it's time to actually apply the black rubbery interface between his cybernetic arm and his body. So let's go to the body material and let's apply a black rubbery material from the library. So again, I'll search for rubber. And I like this one called Rubber Dry. It's really dark and it's got a lot of cool scratchy details. They're a little bit too intense though, so let's turn those down inside of the rubber tire material. I'm gonna open that up. And where it says Wear Levels Height right here, we can just bring these two bottom sliders together and that will lower the contrast in the height. If the scratches are too big or too small or maybe there's too many of them, you can go to the Wear layer and increase the tiling. You can also increase and decrease the balance to change it. Now that we have the material set up, we can see that it needs to be here inside of the armpit. And it's not appearing there. And that's because this is part of the limbs material. So let's copy that rubber tire that we just created. I'm gonna click on this layer and control C for copy. And then I'll go to the limbs and I'll paste that. Notice that it covers 
all of his limbs, both arms, both feet. So we need to create a black mask and just paint this into the armpit. So now that we've filled that gap, let's go back to the body material. And on the rubber tire layer, let's add a black mask. Starting to see a pattern here, I think. <laughs> now on the black mask, we can literally just paint the shape of the interface that we want. Be careful as you go up towards the head though, because at some point, you're gonna cross over into the neck material or the head material, and you're not gonna be able to paint past that point without switching over to the head. So let's try to keep it within the confines of right about here. So the first thing I like to do is just sort of figure out the rough shape of where this is gonna be. And maybe this goes farther down his flank, like this. All right, now that I've got kind of a blob, now I can start using Shift to draw straight lines. So I'll press X to invert, now I'm subtracting, and I'm gonna click and hold down Shift, and I can start making sharp cuts to make this look more mechanical. Maybe I'll add a big circle here. Actually, I realize I'm just recreating what I've already done in the downloadable characters. <laughs> so, don't follow exactly what I'm doing. Try to make your own shapes. Once we've got a nice outline, we need to create the edge of the skin just like we did with the gold filament. So let's rename the rubber tire layer to black rubber. And on the mask for the black rubber, I'm gonna add an anchor point. Now let's add a new fill layer just like we did with the gold filament. And I'll call this black rubber edge. I'll add a mask to black rubber edge and I'll add a fill inside of that fill just like I did before. I'm gonna add an anchor point and I'll choose it from the black rubber mask anchor point. All right, and once again, just like before, let's go up to add a filter, high pass filter. Let's add a levels adjustment right here. I'll press invert and then drag this slider down to about the halfway point. And now you can see that layer is affecting just the outside of the black rubber. Just like before, let's click on that layer and I'm gonna turn off everything except the height and the color. Let's push the height in a little bit. And then again, I'll switch the color to a red irritated shade and maybe change the blending mode to overlay. From here, we can adjust the high pass filter to tighten it up if we need to. And if we want to, we can also add a blur filter to soften the edge a little bit. Let's actually add another layer to add an inside edge to the implants. So I'm gonna duplicate black rubber edge, that entire layer, and I'll call this black rubber inner edge. Now if I alt click on that mask, I can see that we've got this blurry line on the outside of the black area. If I want that to be on the inside to change the edge of the rubber itself, I'm gonna to go to the levels and I'll press reset. So it resets it to default. Let's grab this slider and drag it to the right just over halfway. And now you can see that the white blurry part is on the inside of our drawing. So now we're controlling the edge of the black area itself. So we can do things like this. Let's change the color to white, change the blending mode to screen, and I'll increase the height and turn down the intensity. And actually, let's just turn off the color. We don't need it. We're just controlling the height of the implant itself. All right, let's add some normal details to that rubber, just like we did with the gold filament. So at the very top here, I'm gonna add a new paint layer and I'll call this black rubber details. And again, go back to your texture library and search for normal. And now we can start stamping on these cool normal stamps. Got a big circular area next to his shoulder. So maybe we can use something cool like this one. And I, I am very much just copying what I did for the downloadable character. So again, don't copy exactly what I'm doing. Come up with your own designs. And actually, you know what? I think I'll come up with a different design myself. Now you can see we're getting that problem where I stamp and the detail is going outside of the boundary of the black rubber. So on this black rubber details layer, let's add a black mask. Then let's add a fill to the mask. And inside the fill, let's choose the black rubber mask anchor point. So now it will stay confined to just the area that we've painted for the black mask and it will update dynamically. So if I change the black rubber area, then it will reveal more details that I've painted. I'm not gonna go too crazy with this because it's just a tutorial, but there's so much detail that you can add. I love to add detail, especially to the borders, to the transition between the skin and the black rubber. And also take note that these normal textures have controls, they're not just static images. So for example, this one right here called Bevel Capsule Half, it has sliders, so I can change the capsule length to shorten it, I can change the bevel thickness, and I can even change the direction it's bumping out. So right now it's bumping outward, but I can bump it inward instead. So now it'll cut inward. One of the things I like to do, you'll notice if you look at the downloadable characters, is I like to create little screw holes, just areas where screws can go to make it look like it's bolted into his skeletal structure, especially at the corners of the panels like this. That's good enough for the tutorial. 
feel free to continue adding more and more detail, whatever makes sense for your project. Starting to get a little disorganized here though, so let's organize this by adding a folder to the very top, and I'll call this black rubber material, and I'll click and drag every layer that's associated with that black rubber up into the black rubber folder. So now I can actually hide the folder, it'll hide all four of those layers in one go if I need to. Now you may notice one thing, my blending mode changed, and that's because when things are inside of a folder, they can't really look outside the folder. So when I blend this color with the skin, it doesn't really see the skin anymore. So to make sure that the blending modes are respected inside the folder, we need to click on the folder itself and change the blending mode to pass through. So now it will respect all of the blending modes inside of the folder. Now I want to fix one more thing. I can actually see that his skin bumps and pores are actually showing through the black rubber. So let's go switch to the normal channel for the folder and choose pass through. So you notice you have to do that pass through trick on every channel that you want to affect. Okay, we're almost done. Let's add one more little detail and that's the silver screws in all of these little screw sockets. So go ahead and pick any old metal material that you like. Doesn't matter which one. And we'll drag it onto the torso. Let's add a black mask and let's paint little circles anywhere we want there to be a screw. Pretty cool. Keep going. And sure, why not some big metal detail right here in the middle? All right. Now, just like before, let's add our normal detail layer. So inside of this steel scratched folder, the very top, I'm gonna to add a new paint layer. And you know what I'm about to do. I'm gonna search for normal and just start slapping normals everywhere. I think it looks good. For these little ones, I'm gonna find a screw normal like this one right here. And that will give it the sort of rounded top with a slit to make it look like it's a flathead screw. And that rounded top, that rounded surface really adds a lot of visual interest, especially from far away because it catches the light from more angles. So it's a great little trick if you want there to be a little pop of light. All right, and that's it. So now you can use this trick to add to those downloadable cyberpunk characters that we have in the library and you'll be able to make a whole city of people each with a different cyber implant layout. Now I did create a huge variety of clothing for these characters, but if you need even more variety, stay tuned and subscribe to the channel because I'm going to do a video next on how I did those outfits so that you can make infinite variations. Now I hope you learned a lot of cool tips from this video. Now if you have any tips for me on this process, any ideas that you had while watching the video, be sure to leave a comment. And if you create any cool cyberpunk implants with this character, be sure to tag us on Instagram with it or share it on the Discord. Alright, later creators.